The girl Catherine, inspired by love, called her boyfriend to hear his opinion. Alex, why don't you tell me your decision? Too much time has passed. We need to decide everything once and for all. I can't wait any longer, understand me? Alex listened to Catherine's voice, but couldn't find the words. He was too excited about this conversation, and he was already tired of all this. She has been forcing him to make a decision for a month, but Alex could not make a choice. Catherine, wait a little longer. I need to decide something. Just a couple of questions, but very important ones. And then we will make a decision together, okay? Catherine sighed heavily, but said nothing more about it. She only said, Alex, I love you very much. Remember this. Alex hung up without answering the girl to her confession. What could he say to her? That he was tired of her? This was partially true, but in his soul, there were still remnants of the old feelings that arose so swiftly and suddenly. Alex also loved Catherine once, not like she did, but he loved in his own way. Only this now prevented him from getting rid of the girl once and for all. Alex plunged into the memory of those meetings, dates, walks, and nights of love. But then he turned dark again. Those crazy nights of love led to a completely predictable ending. Catherine is pregnant, and now Alex must decide the fate of not only the girl, but also their common child. Alex smiled bitterly. He imagined how his parents would react to the news of the baby. Their son was only 20 years old. He had not yet graduated from university, and suddenly, he would have a child from some poor girl. And Catherine is only 18 years old. Her parents will probably be happy. Of course, any parents will be happy to place their daughter in a rich family. Alex breathed. He needs to decide everything in the near future. Otherwise, it will really be too late. But all the problems faded into the background when his parents told him in the evening that they were flying to Germany for six months on his father's business. Alex forgot about his girlfriend and her pregnancy. He only thought that he himself couldn't personally force her to have an abortion, so let her decide what to do during his absence. He let it be on her conscience. If she gets rid of the child, then there will be no claims against him because he doesn't force her to do so. Alex quietly flew away two days later with his parents, without even warning Catherine about his long absence. Six months later, Alex and his parents returned from Germany, but only for two weeks. Then they were going to fly to Italy. Alex called Catherine. For a long time, no one answered the phone, and then he heard the faint voice of his girlfriend. Catherine, hello? Forgive me for disappearing so suddenly. I had to urgently fly with my parents to Germany, and I stayed there for a long time, as my parents had things to do. Excuse me for not warning you, but it all happened so suddenly. There was silence in response. Catherine, can you hear me? It's me, Alex. Catherine said quietly. Yes, I hear you. You disappeared so strangely, and I thought you left me. Are you back? Is this really you? Why have you been silent all this time and didn't call me? When can we meet? I need to tell you something, and this is very important. Alex agreed to the meeting, relieved to think that Catherine had had an abortion after all. But in the evening, he saw Catherine in the park with a stroller, and his heart began to beat faster. She still gave birth. What a nightmare. But what should he do now? Catherine looked exhausted. She lost a lot of weight. There were bruises under her eyes, but her eyes shone with joy from meeting her beloved, and hoped that things would still get better. How glad I am to see you, and thank God that you showed up. I thought something happened to you. We have a son. I named him Mark. Alex looked in horror into the stroller. She gave birth early, or so he thinks. Catherine's smile faded as she continued to speak with tears in her eyes. He was born prematurely, probably because of my worries. I gave birth to him just two weeks ago. I was so worried about you. I kept thinking about you, where you could be, what could happen to you. After the birth, I was told that our child had serious health problems and would be disabled. I'm so glad you're with us now. I really need your support. Alex, we'll be fine now, right? But Alex remained silent. And then he backed away a few steps. Catherine, I'm flying to Italy soon, most likely for good. I didn't ask you to give birth without me. You made your own choice. You gave birth to a disabled person, so grow him alone. You are on your own now. I don't want this baby. Forgive me, but I have to go. Good luck. Goodbye. He turned away and left, but Catherine stayed where she was. Tears rolled down her cheeks. She was very hurt to hear this. She imagined for a moment that everything was fine because Alex was back. But now she again didn't know how to live on. Many years had passed since that day. Alex climbed the stairs, breathing heavily. Finally, he reached this hospital. Age makes itself felt, and he is only 50 years old. But he felt old because of that unfortunate injury. The fact is that he fell from a height at a construction site. He took a deep breath and opened the front door. He sat near the doctor's office and absentmindedly looked at the door, occasionally paying attention to the shoes of people passing by. Now he will see old worn shoes like his. 
Then he will see expensive shoes, which he once had in his youth. But those days are long gone. After the death of his parents, Alex quickly spent the entire fortune. His father's business was taken from him for debts. In more than 15 years, he has been wandering from one job to another. An incomplete education didn't give him a single chance to get a normal job. For 10 years, he has been working at a construction site, earning his living. And after a recent injury, he will now have to live only on a disability pension. A wonderful old age awaits him. Suddenly, the office door opened, and a young nurse came out and immediately approached the man. Mr. Wright, come in. Alex carefully rose from the bench and walked into the doctor's office, limping. The young doctor wrote something in the notebook. Alex sat down on a chair near the doctor and began to look at the name badge on the doctor's coat, which had the name Mark Johnson on it. He thought it was a nice name. The doctor finished writing and looked at Alex. I'm listening to you. Alex sighed and was about to start his story, but suddenly his eyes landed on a photograph on the doctor's table. It depicted a young and happy girl. She hugged the man who looked at her lovingly. Alex held his breath because it was Catherine. Alex felt his heart begin to beat faster. He looked at the photo and said, Excuse me, but can you answer one question for me? Who is this girl in the photo? The doctor frowned, but when he looked at the photo, a slight smile appeared on his lips. This is my mother. Many people ask me who it is. She is very beautiful, isn't she? I love this photo very much. I like the way my father looks at her the most. This is real love. Alex looked at the doctor in shock. Then he looked back at the photo. It was Catherine, the girl who at the age of 20 made him a father, who gave birth to his son Mark, whom Alex abandoned then. And now his son sits before him. Mark Johnson is definitely his son. This cannot be a mistake. Suddenly, the doctor continued. Do you know why I still love this photo? Because this is the day my father adopted me. Alex said in surprise. He adopted you? Isn't that your own father? Yes, this is not my own father, but he is dearest to me. This man saved my mother from a terrible fate and madness. When I was born, the doctor said I would be disabled. My father was able to prove to everyone that they were wrong in my diagnosis. My father is very smart. By the way, he is now a professor and a very respected person. Him and my mother fell in love with each other. And I have not met people who have even a half of each other as much as they love each other. I never knew who my real father was. Who was this man who left my mother and left me in trouble? But it doesn't matter, because I'm happy to have a father like mine now. I couldn't wish for better. Alex looked at his son with wide eyes, with which every word like a knife cut into his heart. He felt that he was burning with shame, and it seemed to him that it was written on his forehead. Here is the same scoundrel who abandoned his child. But of course, it was just a figment of his imagination. The doctor continued his story. I'm very happy that I followed in the footsteps of my father. I only chose medicine because I wanted to be like him. But now I know that this is my calling, and I can be proud of myself thanks to my father. I will never get tired of thanking my mother for choosing the best father in the world for me. And Mark finished his story. He looked away from the photo of his parents and looked directly into the eyes of the patients. Alex looked his son straight in the eyes, and he felt so ashamed that he wanted to fall through the ground, disappear, run away. But his body was stoned and couldn't budge. The doctor said, I'm sorry that I was distracted by pleasant memories, but they are so happy that I want to share them with everyone. Excuse me, why did you make an appointment with me? Tell us about your problem. I'll be happy to help you. But Alex slowly shook his head. Then, with difficulty, he got up from his chair and muffled. I made a mistake. I have no complaints to you, and I don't need advice. Sorry to disturb you. I'd better go. Mark Johnson looked at the strange patient with surprise. This had never happened before in his practice. Q is lined up for an appointment with him, and this very strange man suddenly just leaves without even telling about his problem. The doctor found this very strange. Alex, meanwhile, left the office and as soon as possible tried to leave this hospital. When he got outside, he carefully descended the steps and then walked along the sidewalk, not even realizing where he was going. All the years of his life flashed through his mind. Here is a young guy who has the most fashionable things. Here he is a teenager who shows off popular gadgets to his classmates. Here he is a guy who met a beautiful girl, Catherine. Here he lives in Italy, meets different girls there, and does not even remember the girl Catherine and his son whom he abandoned and the accident that took his parents and everything he had. And then the years of hard work, the absence of a family, children, and everything that makes a person happy were stretched. The young woman angrily yelled at Alex when he accidentally brushed her shoulder. Watch where you're going. But Alex couldn't see anything in front of him as his eyes were full of tears. Tears streamed down his cheeks, but he didn't wipe them away. His son, whom he so vilely abandoned 30 years ago, was still standing before his eyes.